I really wish we were better friends, he said tensely. When we hang out, it's not the same as before, he said even more tensely. Well, it's because of how messed up things have gotten between us, he expressed angrily. Well, yeah, what can we do about it? I don't know. I don't like how you won't look at me anymore. Well, then, look at me, he blurted brutally. Oh, we've got some work to do. Hi, guys. I'm Mr. C, and I'm here to tell you how to write dialogue today. This video is part of my creative writing series, so if you haven't seen the other ones that go along with this, I recommend you watch them all. They make more sense if you watch them as a group of videos. But in this video, we're going to focus on how to write dialogue for your characters. If you don't know, dialogue is the writing term for when characters talk. So anytime you're reading something and you see the quotation marks and characters start saying things, that's dialogue. And uh, it's really important that when you write your own fiction, or this goes for nonfiction too, um, it's very important that you really spend a lot of time with the dialogue because we've done uh, character building and world building, but describing your character and your world will only get you so far. You're going to reach a point in your writing pretty quickly where your story is not going to move forward anymore without some good dialogue. And that's what we're here to do. So I've got some sort of guidelines for writing some dialogue. Let's go through them and then I'll show you guys some examples of how to write good dialogue and how to write even better dialogue. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is to just look at the basics of what it takes to write dialogue, something that actually counts as dialogue. And the first thing that you should do is pretty obvious. It is to use quotation marks to mark your dialogue. In that example I showed you at the beginning of the video, there were no quotation marks. So it got very confusing because you could kind of tell that somebody was talking, but you weren't entirely sure. If you had read that little chunk in the middle of a story, you would be very confused. So use quotation marks so that your readers know this is dialogue, this is somebody talking. The next thing you should do is that each time a different character speaks, you indent the line. Now indenting is pressing tab when you're typing or just leaving some space if you're writing by hand, but it's what you do at the beginning of every new paragraph. Well, every time a character starts talking and they weren't already talking, you treat that as though it were a new paragraph. And I'll show you guys what that looks like in just a second, but you always want to indent the line every time a different character starts talking. The next thing to keep in mind, it's some basic sort of grammar stuff, but you'd be surprised how, uh, how confusing it can get if you don't do this. Your punctuation marks should go inside the quotation marks, so things like periods, semicolons, question marks, exclamation points, those all go inside the quotation marks. The final piece of advice is uh, that you should really avoid adverbs. Now, if you don't know, if you're grammar challenged like me, um, adverbs are words that describe verbs. So words like slowly, quickly, nervously, breathlessly, those will all change a verb and you wanna avoid those as much as you can. Now, it's impossible to never use them. You're gonna use them sometimes, but when you're new to writing, um, a lot of us tend to use way more adverbs than are necessary. So you don't want to do these, the slowly, quickly, nervously, breathlessly. You want to be careful with those. Instead, you should just use said a lot. There's nothing wrong with using said, you know, uh, blah, 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 he said. Blah, 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 she said. It feels repetitive, but when your readers uh, read what you wrote, the said is barely going to register. So you can use it a lot, and it's a lot better than overdoing the adverbs. And then sometimes you don't even need to write said. <clears throat> if you have two characters talking, you can have them talk at each other, and because you're indenting every time a different character talks, sometimes you don't need to say said every single time, and it'll be obvious who's saying what. That Use that one at your discretion. But you definitely don't need a ton of adverbs. You just need he said, she said, they said, and you don't even need to say said all of the time. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that piece of dialogue from the beginning of the video using all of the things that I just explained to you guys. And with the magic of video editing, I'm going to be able to do it really fast, so you don't have to sit here and watch me type. You ready? There it is. So the first thing you'll notice, the most obvious difference, is that everything that is dialogue is now wrapped in quotation marks. That's just a very sort of obvious way to make it clear to your readers that someone's talking. The second thing you'll notice is that there are indents every time a uh, different character starts talking. So indent here, here, here. You'll notice here 
This chunk of dialogue took two lines, and so I didn't indent on the second line because it was still the same character. But the very next line, another character started talking, so we went back to indenting. Um, all of the punctuation marks are inside the quotation marks, so this exclamation point here, this period, this question mark. If it is a punctuation mark that goes along with what the character said, then it goes inside the quotation marks. And you'll also notice that I didn't put any adverbs in here. So I just did one single he said up here. And I thought it was pretty clear that it was two characters going back and forth. And so I didn't uh, keep on saying he said. I just said it the one time up here and that was it. No adverbs necessary. So this now reads as, I really wish we were better friends, he said. When we hang out, it's not the same as before. Well, it's because of how messed up things have gotten between us. Well, yeah. What can we do about it? I don't know. I don't like how you won't look at me anymore. Well, then look at me. So those are the basics of writing dialogue. Once you've got some basic dialogue like that written down, there are things you can do to make it better, to make it really good dialogue. So let's go ahead and look at those things now. One big thing that you can do to make it better, and this is kind of taught in most uh, American creative writing classes, so if you go on with creative writing, you'll see this over and over again. But try to make sure that you are showing things, not telling. So instead of telling your readers, the character was very angry, don't do that. Instead, have your character say things that show how angry they are. Don't tell your readers, let the character show your readers. So show, don't tell. And that takes practice, so don't be uh, too concerned if you have trouble with that at first. The next thing is that you can use action to put pauses into dialogue. So if you have two characters talking and they're just going back and forth, that could end up going on for quite a while and it's going to get really tiring for your readers. They're just going to, you know, get worn out by that. So you can use little chunks of action to break up your dialogue and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. A big thing to look out for, especially if you're a newer writer, is to avoid really long speeches. If a character starts talking and goes on and on and on and on, it's going to be the same as if someone in real life starts talking and goes on and on and on and on. You want to only do that if you really have to. Avoid doing it. A big one here is that you should always use dialogue to develop relationships between your characters whenever you can. So in this example piece of dialogue, we've got two characters, and you'd be surprised how far a little bit of dialogue could go. Instead of spending an entire page describing the relationship between the characters, you can just do a short conversation between two characters, and that will explain to the reader what the relationship is. So are these two characters friends? Are they enemies? Uh, do they like each other? Is there jealousy there? Did something happen and now they're not as good friends as they used to be? You can let your dialogue explain that to your readers, and that's a really, really effective way to make your character seem more real. And finally, you should always read your dialogue out loud. Once you've worked on the piece and you've got some dialogue written and you think, yes, this is it, I'm set, make sure you read it out loud. Dialogue, by definition, are things that people said out loud. So when you're writing dialogue, make sure you, the writer, are reading it out loud, just to see what it sounds like when it's actually being spoken. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that example piece, but with these things done to it. So I've added a few things here. The first is that I added two pieces of action. I added this uh, line right here, he looked at the ground, and I added this line right here. He slammed the door shut and threw the spare key under the welcome mat. There weren't any long speeches, so I didn't really need to cut anything out here. And the dialogue is between two characters and it's showing their relationship, so I think we're good on using dialogue to develop relationships. This is definitely doing that. And now that just means it's time for us to read this new version out loud. So here's how it goes now with these changes. I really wish we were better friends, he said. He looked at the ground. When we hang out, it's not the same as before. Well, it's because of how messed up things have gotten between us. He slammed the door shut and threw the spare key under the welcome mat. Well, yeah. What can we do about it? I don't know. I don't like how you won't look at me anymore. Well then look at me. So immediately, this gives more complexity to the relationship. They seem to be at someone's house and they're leaving the house. Whose house is it? Why are they leaving it? What's happened here? Why are they looking at the ground? Why won't they look at each other? Do you see how these little details I added in, this action right here, it split up the dialogue a little bit, it paced it a little better, but also it added to the relationship there. Um, 
That will make your character seem so much more vivid. It will really help push your story forward. And when you read the dialogue out loud, you know whether or not it works. So as I sit here and read this out loud, I'm pretty happy with this. I think that this works well. So I'm going to leave it as is. So that right there, guys, is just a quick introduction to writing dialogue. There's so much more to be said about this subject. This is just a very basic introduction video. But I hope that this helps you get started writing dialogue. I hope that this helps you come up with more realistic characters, because that's going to push your stories forward. Um, as I said in the character video, characters are what draw your readers in. So the better the dialogue, the better the characters, the better the story. Thanks for watching.